And, uh, well, actually, first of all, let's get your thoughts on the Cheltenham handicaps, because, of course, we saw the weights published earlier in the week on Tuesday, and some very interesting handicap marks allotted to particularly some of the Irish horses. I think you've got five handicappers you're looking forward to seeing at Cheltenham for us, Dan? And not necessarily all going to be good bets, but horses that I thought might be of interest for different reasons. Top of the shop for me, and anybody who follows my Twitter, if you're sad enough to do that, um, one in particular stood out to me the day I was at Warwick, and I think we're going to get to see that VT. It's a horse called Good Risk at All, trained by Sam Thomas. A really good bumper performer last season, won twice. His only defeat was at the hands of one one more for the road, who's a, a progressive horse for Neil King. And he put in, frankly, one of the most absurd finishing efforts I've ever seen that day at Warwick. You know, sometimes when you're on track, Tom and Martin, Martin obviously more so would know than, than you and I would because he's used to travelling fast over five furlongs. But not often when you're schlepping around the jumps gaff tracks do you get to see a horse finish as quickly as he did that day at Warwick. And he just marked him down as a very interesting horse. And he's since gone to Ascot, which we won't see. Spread eagled the field in a competitive handicap, looking well ahead of his mark, and he got only 10. But yeah, let's watch this. You almost want to stay silent and observe this moment of, of racing art, but he's a green <laughs> horse still. He wanders approaching the last thing. It's the first time he's been going a proper race and pace in a jump race, and they've not got a strong gallop. The other two, I don't think, are stopping. Watch this now. Final 25 yards. <laughs> The turbo kicks in. It does, and I mean, it, it, it's totally one that got away there. He was heavily back that day at Warwick when I was there, and you, you're one of those where you think, of oh, has the chance been missed? You'll probably never be able to back him at that prize in a handicap next time. As it happened, they had the good sense to go for a proper pot, and he landed at Ascot. He had one horse to beat, as it, as it happened, Christopher Wood, who was revitalised starting out for Venetia. He was well clear of the third, but I thought 10 was generous. I mean, he gave... 13 or 14 pounds in a bumper to I like to move it who went close in a Betfair hurdle so it's a proper operator this and he's still pretty unexposed based on the fact that he didn't really take to hurdling initially he was a bit sluggish the first two starts miles better at Ascot and he must be one of the great British hopes as we go to the festival handicaps bear in mind Britain did draw a blank in all the handicap hurdles last season yeah it'd be nice just to do a little bit better wouldn't it this time Uh, anything else in the handicaps you're looking forward to yeah, one who's uh, from the other side of the Irish Sea, but a, a very familiar face to all of us. Form figures at the Festival of the Small Matter of 112, and that horse is Sire de Burley. Two of the wins were in the very race I'm expecting him to go for, the Potemps final, which we're going to see here. And this was this is strong form. This was the year he beat the Storyteller. The pair were well clear. At this stage, Storyteller was just in in, in flying form, wasn't he? He had, a, he had an amazing season. He was running to marks in the 160s over fences subsequently, powered through the race, and Sire de Burley, even with top weight, I think he was off the top of my head, was able to get the better of him. Despite not travelling as well as a storyteller, he found plenty. And back in third was 2A Per Me, who's been a pretty a storied festival horse himself, even in defeat down the years. He's, he's been luckless a couple of times. But his side of Burley just grinding away at the storyteller, getting the better of him later on. That's vintage Geraghty, as we can see. And 12 months later, of course, he went for a stayers hurdle. But it appears, even working back from that, that they've shelved aspirations that he is that type of horse. It seems with the Warwick running the qualifier that the, the attempt was their aim again. And you just know he's going to give a good account of himself. I think the handicap has given him a real chance down to mark in the mid-150s. And I believe Rob James is claiming as well. That's the icing on the cake, really. Yeah, Rob James proving very popular, isn't he, in the uh, the handicaps at Cheltenham this year, most likely at least for most of Gordon Elliott's horses as well. And the same Silks, a horse who always promised a lot, had plenty of potential in his younger days, is Andy Dufresne. And I know you're keen on him as well. Yeah, he's our chase. Andy Gaffer Phil Turner was first alerting me to it when the weights came out. And you're comparing the time farm ratings to the official ratings. And it looks lofty. Again, mid 150s and not got the same quality of form as, as say, a Sayed of Burley who's running off a similar mark. But, I mean, they clearly thought the world of him. He was he was picked by Mark Walsh over Janadil in the Grade 1 novice last uh, uh, two seasons ago. Now, was it last season? No, it was last season. This is him behind Captain Guinness. Perfectly serviceable reappearance. And he's just going to be a fair bit easier for him. And that sounds a bit peculiar, considering it's a grand annual and we know the deeply competitive races. But this is an animal who's 
been butting heads with the best that the Irish had to offer in the novice ranks last season. A horse who finished ahead of Asteria and Falange once last season. So I just think the handicapper may have given him a bit of a chance. And I do like these top weights in handicaps. Yes, you might think they, they could be vulnerable to an improver who, who hasn't peaked yet, but they have just that class edge. And I think he may well have that. And I think he'll be really well suited by a, a well-run handicap as well. Yep, certainly got a massive chance, I think. I would agree with you there, Dan, on Andy Dufresne. I know you've got two fancies in the Boodles, and one of those is forever blessed for Harry Fry. And I'd be very interested to see what you make of his run at Chepstow in that Grey 1 finale when he got chopped up a little bit. Yeah, precisely that. I think it was just a write-off run. Um, Tommy Dowson got, I don't know, whatever you make, it might have been a bit harsh. He got banned for the manoeuvre on Skycutter, who may well reoppose if he gets in. And forever blessed, really couldn't recover from that. But I think if you'd have stopped his career after this performance the third horse who weakens into third of Gary Moores has won a race since if he'd have stopped his career after this performance I think you'd have been a bit surprised if we were dealing with a horse that was going handicapping off one two four he's gone off favorite for the finale hurdle the race we just discussed where he didn't get a fair crack of the whip that that meant that he was a shorter price in that race than Porticello who's one of the leading hopes for the triumph hurdle for, for Britain and he's a horse who's a bit of an open book he, he didn't run on the flat He's run, twi- he's run twice at Sandown and won convincingly on both occasions. Sorry, first time was at Foss last, then ran at Sandown. And yes, Chepstow, I think you can you can easily forgive him that. one two, four for a horse that was considered to be a, a more likely winner of that finale hurdle than Porticello, I thought was quite striking. And another thing to note is he's never run away from the mud yet, and he's all flatbred. It's a flat pedigree. I mean, there's I think there's a chance of seven or ten pounds of improvement just for less testing conditions. So I thought he was quite an interesting runner amongst a race where we may well be playing for second if the Gaelic warrior noises are as accurate as as they seem likely to be. Yeah, connections to them were saying that uh, Supreme next year would have been an option. Another horse you like in that race is Putty Tonnerre. Yeah, just some. this is probably more of a longer sh- term sh- shout, to be honest, Tom, but uh, let's watch this. This is great because... John Joe spent John Joe Jr. spent a long time watching AP McCoy ride, as we know, and I thought there was elements of AP here. I don't think John Joe wanted to go and give this hard, horse a hard race and win by miles. I think they were probably mindful that the Boodles was the plan. He got the entry on the day. It was the day when there was the the big online crash for um, for the website, so people were struggling to get horses entered and they had to delay it. And it was in the paddock at Raisin where I said to John Joe's son is he going for it has he got an entry he's like yeah he has um, just something about him physically he doesn't look like a conventional four year old he's got lots of size and scope and I thought he won that, that like a proper horse and watching the French videos back I thought he won those like a proper horse as well particularly second time up he beat a couple of horses who've dominated a good French juvenile handicap since they've been fifth and sixth in the best juvenile race running France so far so I thought his form lines look pretty strong and Naturally, the handicapper couldn't do much after market raise and a race that was a means to an end because he needed that run to qualify for the for the Boodles. Yeah, and I know the Boodles is always a competitive race, but I think this year it looks even more competitive than usual. So many go in there with a good chance. And I know that plenty of trainers have said about their horses. They think they're above the handicapper. One of those is too friendly. Dan Skelton's very keen on that one. 